In September 2014, FAO organized an international symposium on agroecology for food security and nutrition in Rome. Over 400 people from 62 FAO member countries representing uh, the best scientists, uh, policy makers, civil society, public and private sector came to FAO for two days to present the scientific evidence on agroecology, to present the many best practices that farmers and their associations adopt around the world in different ecologies and in different systems, and to present the future challenges uh, of agroecology. is a very short uh, example of the many gaps, ideas, science and um, debate that took place during those two days. Um, but please, for more information, consult our website or go into the detailed YouTube videos that many of the scientists and the participants to the symposium prepared during their attendance to the conference. For me, it began in southern Mexico as a professor at a small school of tropical agriculture, surrounded by a development bank, international development bank, mega green revolution development project. And we, we as ecologists were asked to look at the ecology of that system and very soon compared it, integrated it with what was a local Mayan-based traditional agriculture and looked at that from an ecological perspective. And the differences between the two were so dramatic that it was clear that agroecology both needed to support and help continue the ability of local people to produce the food that they needed but also to provide a foundation for the redesign of, of conventional agricultural systems. In face of the challenges of climate change, population growth and demand growth, uh, shrinking of natural resources in general ways and also growing inequity around the world, uh, we need to deal uh, in a different way with our food system uh, in total. And the food system, I mean from production to consumption. So agroecology really is born from, from the marriage of traditional knowledge and uh, scientific knowledge that has emerged in the universities in the last 30 years, especially ecological knowledge, anthropological knowledge, ethnobotanical knowledge. Part of my work as a family doctor and trying to get us to trust ourselves has really been to go and look at how traditional farmers take care of their land. And what I found is this incredible wealth of knowledge. And at first, the work that I was doing with traditional uh, farmers was much more sort of metaphorical. It really was trying to tell these stories like about how they manage pests, um, you know, with these ideas of balance and so on, being things that we could um, take back to ourselves and, and, and you know, use them more for ideas of how to achieve balance in our bodies. But the more I did this work, the more I realized that, in fact, the way they were practicing indigenous agriculture had everything to do directly with our health. It isn't enough, I think, to say that we simply want these systems. We have to justify these systems. And oftentimes, we need to evaluate these systems as well, both in monetary and non-monetary terms. 
Because in the absence of that monetary and non-monetary valuation, we'll find that we can be preaching only to the converted. So the aim of the TEEP study overall is to present an evidence-based, science-based research platform to discuss alternative systems across a range of social, cultural and ecological gradients, so in a variety of different countries, to look at what the benefits of alternative systems are. I think the advantage of any agro-ecological system is in utilising its complexity so that a stable farming system results and farmer livelihood is secured by the diversity and stability of the range of products. We have found that uh, knowledge is the key thing, that uh, farmers are very rational and they will take the technologies uh, that are beneficial to them. And we have found that uh, they are very much willing and they have actually started uh, conserving pollinators through various means. For example, they are now controlling the use of pesticides uh, when crops are flowering. Culture in Africa means uh, forestry, means fisheries, it means crop production, means livestock. So as a result, you cannot talk of uh, feeding people without talking about the interdependence of uh, those different subsystems. As I look closely at how pollinators fit into our agroecosystems, I'm really convinced that it's not just working out how we can save bees that's the future for, for pollinator conservation, but the issues are much wider than that. And I think it has very much to do with looking at how we can promote a different kind of agriculture that really is based on biological processes, interactions between species that's very biologically friendly and supportive. And I find that that very much resonates with agroecology. So I see a lot of scope for agroecology entering more into the work that, that we work on here at FAO and more largely in, in making a more sustainable agriculture.